I'd like to do another sample problem about a normal distribution. Here's some information about U.S. newborn babies. The mean average weight of newborns in the United States is approximately mu equals 7.5 pounds. The standard deviation, the amount that those weights vary, has been calculated to be approximately 1.1 pounds. All right, now let's use this information. A hospital wants to build a special observation room for the lightest 2% of all newborns that come to that hospital. Now, I'm sure you would say there are probably other criteria you'd really want to use to determine whether or not a newborn should be placed in the special observation room, but just for simplicity's sake and just for our, our use of this for understanding how to do probability problems, with a normal distribution, let's keep it simplistic and say we're going to base it entirely just on the weight of the baby at birth. Okay, so we're going to have a special observation room in which we're going to place the lightest 2% of all newborns. Well, what should the hospital use then for the cutoff weight? Babies that are under what weight should be placed in this observation room? Can we determine what that is? Yes, we can. We can because we have an understanding about what the normal distribution means and we have an understanding about how to use this special table of positive and negative z-scores. So here we go. Once again, we start by drawing, always, always start by drawing the normal distribution. In this case, this represents the weights of newborn, so my x-axis represents weights. So right here in the middle is the mean of 7.5. The mean in a normal distribution is always smack dab in the middle, and the standard deviation is 1.1. So let's just show a couple standard deviations. If I go on one standard deviation, that takes me out to 8.6 pounds. If I got another standard deviation, that takes me out to about 9.7 pounds. If I come to the left here, uh, that takes me out to about 6.4 pounds. If I come out one more standard deviation to the left, that takes me out to 5.3 pounds. All right. Now, what I'm interested in is where are the lightest 2%? Well, the lightest 2% of babies are over here on the left, aren't they? 2% isn't very much. So, let me just shade in a little bit of that, and let's, let's say that this, this represents 2% of the lightest babies. Okay, now whether or not it's to the left of 5.3 or bigger than, I really don't know exactly where it falls in respect to 5.3, but I just, I just say, there it is. Okay, so please understand we're working this problem backwards. Instead of being given an X value and told to convert it to a probability or to a percent, we're starting with a percent, and we're asked to find out what is the cutoff weight, that is, what is the x value of this boundary line? That's the question. Do you see that we're working this problem backwards this time? So instead of being given a z-score and looking it up on the table, we're going to start with the probability and look up the z-score, and then go from there. It's still going to be a two-step process. We're going to go from step number one, from the probability to the z-score. And step number two is to work backwards, turn that z-score into an x value. Okay? All right. Here we go. First step, let's take the table and uh, 2%. Maybe we should write this down. 2% written, written as a decimal, four decimal places, as all the data is in my z-score table, that'd be 0 0.02, then with two trailing zeros. So I want to find the closest probability in the content of this page that's closest to 0 0.0200. 0 0. And again, I'm not sure how readable this is. Uh, 0 0.0200. 0. Uh, you can look at your own 0 0.02. I found a 0 0.0202. Can you read that? Maybe just barely or maybe not. And I've also found a point 
0.0197. Well, this, this one is three ten thousandths away, and this one's only two ten thousandths away. 0 0.0200 would be almost halfway between these two, but since this one's closer over here, I'm going to pick that one. 0 0.0202. All right, so we've, we've found our beginning number, and now I want to convert this to a z-score. So I need to know to the left what are the first values, and those are uh, negative 2.0. I've got my whole number in my tenths place. I now need to know up here at the top what my hundreds place is, and if you can read it, when I go, I go past it, no, there it is. Uh, that is, if you can read it, that's a 5. So it's negative 2.05. So my z-score... is negative 2.05. So I know what the z-score of this boundary line is. I just need to convert it. Well, please remember, let's go through the formula again. To, to find a z-score with an x value, we take the x value, we subtract the mean, and divide by the standard deviation. So to go backwards, to be given a z-score and have to find the x value, we just do everything in reverse with the reverse operations. So what I want to do first is not divide but multiply by the standard deviation. So I'll take my z-score and multiply it times the standard deviation. And then last, I will not subtract the mean, but I will add the mean. And this will affect, will take it and run the whole thing backwards. So I can say that my x value is simply my z-score times the standard deviation plus the mean. That should not be too complicated of a, of a formula for you to understand running it backwards. In any case, if you want to put this on your formula sheet, go right ahead. Put it right beside this one. So here we go. All we have to do is say, all right, so this really amounts to being my z-score of negative 2.05, multiplying it times my standard deviation, which was 1.1 pounds, so it would be times 1.1, and we're going to add in the mean, which was 7.5. I'm going to use my calculator on this, but just enter exactly what I've got here. So that is negative 2.05 times 1.1 plus 7.5, and that is equal to, I said syntax here, what did I do wrong? Let me, <laughs> instead of putting in 1.1, I put in point, 0.1 point. Oh, let me try it again. You probably already got the answer. Negative 2.05 times 1.1, yeah, I did it right, plus 7.5 equals, see, I even, I make stupid mistakes too, equals 5.245. And let's round this to, to one decimal place. So that's approximately, one decimal place is approximately 5.2 pounds. So we're saying the cutoff weight for babies, so whether or not they should be placed in the observation room, those babies that are the 2% lightest babies overall in the whole United States, those would be babies who are lighter than 5.2 pounds. And we found that by simply taking our process backwards.